As of all disclosures, I have received uh, lecture fees from Quantum Medical. All of these images belong to diabetic patients. They are all asymptomatic, 20-20 vision, but they all have edema nocity that is starting to affect the phobia, partially or completely. What to do with these patients is classically controversial. Is just waiting observation too risky? Is intravitreal therapy too aggressive, too costly? Laser, who does that anyway? There's been a couple of recent studies trying to shed some light, some light over it, especially DRCR's protocol V. I'm going to come back to this later. For any given situation, an ideal treatment option, treatment option, treatment alternative should be of course effective, it has to work, it must be safe for the patient, it must be affordable both in, in terms of raw cost and derived visits, and we, when it, as the case of talking about a chronic condition, we must be able to repeat it as much as we want. And as you can see from these classic alternatives, each one has its ups and downs. Observation could not be cheaper, but its effectiveness can be discussed. Intravitreal therapy is highly effective and highly costly. And although it's mainly safe, intravitreal injections nowadays, uh, we must consider that the event of an endophthalmitis in a 2020 eye is rather a disaster. About ETDRS, classical photocoagulating laser, it's highly operator dependent and not as much repeatable as we would like to. So, an ideal situation should have green checks in all of this. Then our purpose has been precisely to see how subthreshold subliminal laser works uh, to fit this role, both in terms in of effectiveness, and by, by this we mean visual acuity preservation and anatomical restoration of the OCT, and safety, assessed through fundus autofluorescence, which, as mentioned earlier, is very sensitive to detect any kind of RPE disturbance, which should not be seen in laser. We know it's not necessary to cause any visible damage just to stimulate the RPE and surroundings. We enrolled patients with central involving DME, vision at least 0.7, who were naive or hadn't received any treatment for macular edema at least for six months. We delivered the subliminal laser confluently over the thickened areas using OCT as a guide and its immediate surrounding, 160 micron spots. I titrate power at one third of the energy for the minimally visible peripheral burn and we also spared the phobia itself and immediate surroundings from the treatment. I'll come back to this later. We assessed every patient every three months. A few cases before the data. Here we have a rather mild edema, not too much, asymptomatic patient. We lasered it. We can see how the first, if I don't say anything, this Im the sequences of M images are separated 12 weeks one from each other. At the first visit, seeds have completely resolved, still a mild thickening that fades away on its own on posterior visits. Usually you will see an improvement in the first visit, but the, it will usually also keep improving. As you can see, the autofluorescence doesn't seem, doesn't seem to show any kind of change. Harsh erythema, large central cyst. Here we treat quite a, wi a wider area. On the first visit, it wasn't completely resolved, but this, it was clearly better, still some cyst remaining. So we just waited 12 more weeks, and it was still even better. As you can see in the RPI, no changes, and how the thickness changed progressively. The thickness maps of the OCTs are a great tool to evaluate your, your laser results. The slides can be tricky. And if you look carefully, at the autofluorescence, you will see that you cannot see the spots. That's there's more, in this treatment it was around 500 spots, I believe. Here, there was this initial neurosensory detachment which was aborted. Here we have another central focus, we have more peripheral one. All the area was treated, they both resp responded nicely. Bilateral case. Nice evolution, one single treatment per eye, nice evolution along a year. So about the data, we treated 23 eyes belonging to 19 patients, most of them di type 2 diabetes, with an average visual acuity of 0 0.8. Average follow-up was nine months, ranging from three to 15, and we delivered treatments on average of 396 millivats and 288 sp sp spots, I mean the number of spots at a fixed 160 micron diameter per spot and 5% UV cycle. 
<coughs> central retinal thickness decreased. At the first visit, 16 microns. And they told you it keeps improving, so in the, at the end of follow-up, it decreased a little more, up to 22 microns. In both cases, highly statistically significant. Those are not great numbers, but of course, re remember, we are working here with maculas that are not too thick to begin with. At the first visit, 30% of cases, a little more, had a complete resolution of the edema, while 50% showed improvement. This, this percentage of resolved cases in OCT increased to over 56% at the end of follow-up. Visual acuity remained grossly stable. This very small change is non-significant. Not a single patient lost vision. Complications, well, more than complications, this, this first one is a non-responder. One patient didn't seem to respond. The re retina kept thickening slightly as if nothing had been done. And we had two patients with visible spots. There were a few spots, not all of them, on the periphery of the treated area that were visible only on autofluorescence. Or if you look, looked really carefully on the fundus, they were symptomatic at all time. They were two, two patients in which I employed the highest power of the series, so probably the problem is there. So, substantial laser for this small case series has been an effective and safe treatment alternative for this kind of patients. Apparently, sparing the phobia from, from treatment does not worsen the results. I mean, don't get me wrong, there is extensive literature on how transphobia treatment is safe. That's true, completely agree, but that is when it is performed by experts, right? As you've seen, the average treatment is around 300 spots. So if you spare the phobia and surroundings and instead of 300, deliver 295, this is hardly going to make any change, and you will sleep better at night. Current literature, especially Protocol V recently published, suggests the observation to be a reasonable treatment strategy, but does not do it for me for a series of reasons. First of all, the observed patients, in order not to lose visions, require a clinical trial degree of follow-up frequency. I mean, you must follow them very close, closely. And life is not a, a clinical trial. Life is real, and we all have overburdened offices. And you have to follow them closely, because as soon as they lose vision, you have to rescue them with intravitreal therapy. How often did it happen in protocol V that observation arm needed rescue? One out of three patients required it. And this patient receiving a median of seven injections in two years. Not to mention subthreshold laser is not part of, uh, of protocol V arms. So that way observation does not do it for me because I need something effective at, pres at preserving vision and restoring anatomy, safe for the patients, affordable from a healthcare system that makes my life easier and that I can repeat as much as I require. So that's why for this situation, I go sub-threshold, I go subliminal. Thank you.